What's up everyone? It's Monday once again and that means another episode of the Wine Science Commentary is waiting for you. My name is Lawrence and as always I prepared a highly interesting topic for you. To plunge or not to plunge is the question, so this paper compared different punch down frequencies per day. The outcomes are highly unexpected as I find, so watch it till the end if you want to know what's going on. And if you like the content then hit the subscribe button down below in the corner. And that's it from my side. Let's do it. The effect of half plunging and no plunging as alternative winemaking techniques on phenolic extraction and pigment composition of wine. Head research here was Rod Chetenden from the School of Applied Science at the EIT in Hawke's Bay, New Zealand. And the research was published in 2015 in the South African Journal of Enology and Viticulture. So, Rod Chetenden, senior lecturer, wine scientist at the EIT in New Zealand. So there you can study uh, yeah, viticulture and enology if you wish. It says here he holds a chemistry bachelor's and a wine science master's. Furthermore, he joined EIT in 2001 after working in winemaking at Corbin's and Church Road wineries in Napier. He previously taught chemistry and mathematics and at EIT Rod teaches wine production, sensory and wine science courses. And so you see he has this uh, theoretical background combined with practical experience so this is also displayed in this paper here it's very well written very well researched well explained it's even open source i'm going to paste the link downward so check it out if you wish introduction it is believed that the mixing process during maceration enhances the diffusion and movement of phenolic compounds from the skin and seeds into the juice and wine sachi et al concluded that fermentation temperature thermobonification must freezing signier Pectolytic enzyme treatments and extended maceration increased phenolic concentration, whereas SO2 levels and cold soak treatments had little or no lasting effects or led to a decreased or decrease in phenolic levels. Yeah, so here again it says cold soak treatments had no little or even leads to a decrease in phenolic levels in wine. And I did a video on that as well, so I'm gonna paste the link up here, so check it out if you wish. Punching down and roto treatments yielded the highest total polyphenol concentrations and the pump over treatments the lowest concentrations in a study by Marais in 2003. Then I would say we're gonna jump right to our experimental design. I created a small PowerPoint here. It's quite easy to understand how this research was conducted. So they uh, compared three different winemaking techniques among each other. They used Merlot as cultivar. And the first treatment, also the control treatment, was termed traditional maceration or TM as you see here. It consisted of three replicates, 12 kilograms each. And so, yeah, it was a traditional red wine fermentation um, with the maceration on skins for 15 days. And for each day, they performed two punch downs, and every punch down consisted of 12 plunge, plunges yeah, per punch down. Treatment number two they termed half plunging or half and again three replicates per treatment and what is the difference now between this and the traditional maceration the difference is they started the two punch downs per day after day six so at day seven so at the half time of fermentation and again 12 plunges per punch down then treatment three was yes you guessed it correctly the non plunging treatment or NP Again, three replicates per treatment and yeah, fermentation maceration on skins again for 15 days and no punch downs at all in this treatment. So that means the ferment was untouched. Back to our paper. Table one shows us the general composition of the mellow wines after 12 months. So you see here, traditional maceration, the half maceration and non-plunging. And what about titratable acidity, the lowest levels statistically even in the traditional maceration treatment why is that of course if you do a lot of punch downs you have a lot of friction going on you have a lot of extraction of potassium going on meaning you know the formation of a potassium b-titrate which precipitates and then you lose titratable acidity of course and this um, converts over to the pH meaning the highest pH levels again statistically in the traditional maceration treatment compared to the other two what about volatile acidity? Actually, this is quite interesting because you would think 
you find the highest VA levels in the non-plunging treatments because of course you know if you don't punch down your cap you have oxidation going on of your ethanol thus you create acetaldehyde or ethanol and thus you create acetic acid and consequently the volatile acidity but no we see here all results are statistically indifferent from each other in terms of alcohol we have no differences here so same alcohol levels and in terms of residual sugars you see all wines are completely dry then let's go on with our tannins during maceration so during the 14 days of maceration here and they compared the traditional maceration to the non-plunging treatment and at day three or so you see that we already have the highest concentration of tannins extracted in the non-plunging wines compared to the traditional maceration wines and yeah this trend goes on goes on goes on and gets even significantly here you know at day 10 and day 12 and then after day 14 here the highest levels of tannins extracted in the non-plunging treatment so you see here you know the levels of tannins extracted increases increases and then kind of flatten out flattens out at you know day what is it day 12 13 14 and even decreases a bit at the end which is a normal fermentation kinetic i would say same trend is observed at total phenolics when compared uh, traditional maceration against non-plunging you see here the highest total phenolics extracted um, at day three already in the non-plunging treatment this trend goes on goes on goes on until day 14 and we end up with the highest total phenolics in the non-plunging treatment what about total pigments during maceration so total pigments are of course a measurement of red wine color it consists basically of free anthocyanins and then your anthocyanin tannin complexes and you see here after day three again the highest significant even levels of uh, total pigments in the non-plunging treatments uh, and replicates and this trend goes on goes on goes on until day 14 and you end up with the highest total pigments or the highest yeah, red wine color in the non-plunging treatment compared to the traditional maceration treatment highly interesting so why is this actually why do we find um, more total pigments um, or more color in the non-plunging treatment shouldn't it be the opposite way around if you do a lot of punching down shouldn't you extract more no it's because of this reason here free anthocyanins and you see we end up um, with the highest free anthocyanins um, in the non-plunging treatment compared to the traditional maceration treatment and why is that it is because during plunging you normally you know mix your cap with your juice so the cap temperature decreases yeah or averages out whereas if you don't plunge then your cap heats up and you extract more anthocyanins here and that's the reason why you also have the formation of more total pigments during maceration okay very interesting so higher color in the non-plunging treatment what about pigmented tannins during maceration so pigmented tannins basically are those tannin anthocyanin complexes which give a stable color and contribute 90 percent to the color after two years or so and um, yeah also have positive mouthfeel properties and here the trend is actually reversed we see that the traditional maceration uh, treatment has the highest pigmented tannin levels after 14 days and why is that that's because if you punch down you incorporate a lot of oxygen in your ferment and this oxygen basically you know make some ethanol or acetaldehyde because it oxidizes ethanol and um, acetaldehyde can link anthocyanins to your tannins yeah, with this ethanol bridge thus you have a higher formation of pigmented tannins in the traditional maceration treatment here but this trend is actually reversed after 50 days or so we're going to see that later in this paper now let's go down here let's look at some charts so here we have the comparison of total phenolic concentrations until or up to one year of aging and we see again the highest total phenolic levels in the non-plunging treatment on second place the highest or the second most concentration of total phenolics in the half plunge treatment and then the least concentration in the traditional maceration treatment um, yeah again the same trend for tenants um, highest amount again in the non-plunging treatments the uh, same trend for the total pigment color you see here the highest levels again in the non-plunging treatment after one year 
And then one more thing I mentioned in the beginning is the pigmented tannins are actually the highest in the traditional maceration treatment until day yeah, 75 or so. But after that, the um, numb plunging pigmented tannins take off, accelerate, and we have the highest pigmented tannin concentration in the numb plunging treatment after one year or almost one year of aging. Very interesting. Now let's jump to the conclusion. At the end of maceration, total phenolics, total pigment and free anthocyanins were significantly lower in terms of concentration in the traditional maceration treatment compared to the non-plunging treatment. Pigmented tannins was consistently at higher concentration in the traditional maceration over the next 11 months. But then afterwards, the total pigmented tannin levels um, accelerated and we find the highest level in the non-plunging treatments. So this means overall we have a higher stable color in the non-plunging wine from about 90 day onwards. Low extraction in the traditional maceration wines was partially due to increased exposure to oxygen. And this also means if you plunge, you have an increased disruption of berry solids, leading to more absorption, oxidation, and potassium bititrate precipitation removing portions of the extracted phenolics. Higher anthocyanin and total phenolic concentrations in the non plunging wine may have led to higher co pigmentation rates, which in turn led to greater pigmented tannin development in the non-plunging wine. So this study actually shows that the small scale non-plunging treatment produced Merlot wines with more color and more stable color. Winemaking resources are in high demand during vintage time and that means the wines produced here or in this study would also exhibit greater color stability after one year. So the non-plunging um, treatment. Very interesting. So take home message. Again, you see here, if you don't plunge or in this study specifically, they didn't plunge and this led to higher total phenolic levels, to higher tannin concentration, to yeah, what else? Higher total pigmented color, higher free anthocyanin levels and higher pigmented tannin concentration after one year of aging. And why actually, or from what does this come? This comes if you, if you plunge a lot, that means you have a lot of oxidation processes going on, meaning your, um, yeah, your phenols get oxidized. Also, you have a lot of friction going on. You create a lot of polysaccharides, which bind or absorb your extracted phenolic matter. And you know, those solids precipitate together with uh, potassium bitrate, so you lose even more of these uh, previously extracted phenolics and then also you have if you don't plunge uh, heating up of your cap and thus you extract more of these phenolics highly interesting and thanks for watching that was our weekly episode of the wine science commentary guys i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed it if so then you might want to consider subscribing to the channel why not and stay tuned for more next week we will discuss fermentation temperature and its impact on wine sensory and wine chemistry so that's it from my side have an awesome week stay safe stay hydrated see you next monday cheers